What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner and today I'm going to be showing you how to tell if a dropshipping product is saturated. Now I think that this is super important. There's pretty much no videos on this topic right now and honestly like you, you should know about this because it really made a huge difference when I started implementing the strategies that I'm about to talk about because I went from testing like 10 products and maybe finding like you know 0.2 winners to testing like you know five products I'm finding a winner. So I would say that's pretty good and if you think so too, definitely stick around and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and hop right into it. All right, so I have a little PowerPoint presentation prepared for you guys. That was a lot of peas anyway. Um, time is money, so uh, let's go ahead and hop right into this. So the first thing that I really wanna cover is does it really matter if a product is saturated? So as you can see in my little speaker notes right here, um, it kind of matters. It, it's not really a huge deal, but it is a huge deal at the same time. Um, so I would say that in most circumstances, especially if you're gonna be using Facebook ads, like it does matter and you should at least have a good idea of how saturated a product is because it's going to change your approach to testing that product. But there's definitely different ways that you can sell saturated products successfully, which we're going to talk about in the future, like a couple minutes in the future. So yeah. Next slide, moving on. This is what I have coined and trademarked and copyrighted, the Facebook two through eight over 1K rule. It's catchy, I know. And basically what that means is if you go to adspy.com, which is basically my favorite software in the world, really expensive, um, but really powerful and uh, worth it. They've got like a free trial. I've got a free trial. I got a little affiliate link in the description below. Um, but yeah, this is like the only thing that I use to tell if a product is saturated because frankly, like I just, I don't know if there's any other way that's near as good as this one. So basically what you do is you go to adspy, search up a product name, like for example, fidget spinner, okay? So you search up fidget spinner and then you sort by likes. So basically the most scaled ads come to the top because obviously they would have the most likes because, because they've been shown to the most people. Then you're gonna wanna filter by shop now, which is basically the call to action that all these ads are using so that you're shown specifically e-commerce ads. Next, you're gonna wanna do video because Wish likes to do a ton ton of Facebook ads and they're all scaled, super scaled. And sometimes you'll search up a product and like 90% of the shit is going to be Wish and you're not really competing with Wish right here. Kind of, hopefully. Anyway, so uh, just count how many videos have over a thousand likes. So let's say, you know, you search up fidget spinner, there's obviously going to be a lot on there because it's a really saturated product, but you can just go through and count one, two, three, four, five, six, and literally just keep doing that until you get to the videos that have less than a thousand likes. Next, you're gonna to wanna to try different product names, like for example, fidget spinner, for example, spinning toy, or like fidget toy, or something like that, or like just try to find different ways that people could phrase the product. Some people even use like, you know, like they try to trademark terms, like put more of a brand spin on it, which is actually something that I do. So you can do like master fidget, or something like that, you know? A lot of people know what I mean if you've been in the dropshipping game for a little while, but if you do see any of those on previous ads, definitely just feel free to like look up that term because most people just end up copying uh, the their competitors because they have no like creativity. Um, people do that to me. But anyway, so um, yeah, definitely continue counting those ads, but just make sure that you're not counting any ads twice. So what I do here is kind of just try to take note of this player's name so that you know, or the store's name so that you know, like, okay, you know, I already saw four of these guys' ads and I already counted them on the last term, so I don't need to count them again on this term. So hope that makes sense. And then you're going to want to keep in mind that you should exclude some certain ads because they're not necessarily competing with you or contributing to the saturation of the product in your target industry. And what I mean by that is, if you see some ads on there, AdSpy is so powerful, you're able to see what countries they're running in, what ages they're targeting, stuff like that. But really the only things that matter is the countries in this certain context. So there's a ton of advertisers that just target like India or the Philippines and stuff like that. Most of the time, their ads are going to be in Filipino or Indi Hindi, 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 I don't, I think it's handy. Um, anyway, yeah, so they're not really competing with you, not the market you're targeting, and you can go ahead and exclude those ads from your grand total. Also, you can also exclude the ads that people have been running engagement for. So like, for example, you may see an ad with like 60,000 likes, and you're like, 
Wow, that's, that's a lot of likes. So if you actually go to the ad, there's a little button for it on AdSpy, and then you go to like the Facebook and you can just scroll through the comments. A lot of these ads are actually going to be engagement ads. And someone just scaled the heck up and it has like tons of comments from just like people in the Middle East or like people in India and stuff like that where just, they just have really low CPMs but no one actually buys your stuff. Um, I don't know why this happens. I, I really don't see it being profitable in any way, shape, or form. However, it's really good to know that those people aren't really competing with you. They're not really contributing to the saturation of a product because that specific ad wasn't necessarily selling to a lot of people in your target market, most likely. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Basically, what I'm saying is you just got to add up all the ads with over a thousand likes and then subtract the ones that I just went over. So another thing that you should be doing when you're looking at all of these ads is actually watching the videos. So make sure that people aren't just using the same ad because this actually happens a lot. Like I mentioned earlier, dropshippers have no creativity. Like they'll just rip other people's ads, rip other people's product pages, rip everything. And that is such a big opportunity for you because if you come in there on a scaled, saturated product and you have good content that's super unique, and optimize landing pages and all this good stuff that no one else has, you're going to crush it because the product itself is already proven. So if you can come in there and beat all the competitors, then yeah, you're just gonna make a whole lot of money. And I've done this with multiple winning products. Next, you're gonna wanna look at the last scene date, which is basically when AdSpy has last um, noticed that the, the, the ad is running on Facebook. So a lot of times you'll find a saturated product, but no one's really been promoting it or at least scaling it in the past year. And again, this is an opportunity for you because it's proven, but you don't really have much direct competitors that are going to be kind of taking your customers, at least at the moment. So if your grand total is between two and eight and the product does not fall into these two conditions, meaning it's not a bunch of like, you know, the same videos and it's also not a product that was scaled a really long time ago, you're going to want to look for between two and eight ads that have over a thousand likes. So the reason being is you want to have over two ads with over a thousand likes because it proves the product. It shows that some people have made a decent amount of money selling that product. You want to have below eight because it shows that there's still a lot of growth potential for that product, meaning you can get in and you can sell that product for six months or 12 months or two years or three years. Different products have different life cycles for sure. But if you're jumping in and the ad already has like 30 ads with over a thousand likes, then you're probably not going to be able to sell that product super successfully or hit really good returns or be able to do that for a long period of time. So overall, it's normally not worth testing a product that's over eight ads with over a thousand likes if it doesn't fall into these two criteria. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So we're gonna be moving on to the next slide where I talk about TikTok ads because that is like, I love me some TikTok ads. So unfortunately, there's no ad spy for TikTok ads. There's really almost no software for TikTok ads. So if you're a software guy, um, big opportunity there. And really what the only way I know to find a saturated product or like kind of identify a saturated product on TikTok, so just go ahead and test it. You know, you're not going to lose much. I recycle saturated products from Facebook all the time and test them on TikTok. A lot of times they work, sometimes they don't, but kind of how the game goes. So you can go ahead and test the product with three different creatives. Make sure these are good creatives. If you're just stealing ads from Facebook, probably not going to work that well. It could work, but yeah, usually not worth it. Um, then you can go ahead and test more creatives and start optimizing your landing page. So if it works, then that's great. All the more reason to go in and test more creatives and optimize your landing page. But if it doesn't work, then you kind of have a, a choice, really. You can either test different style creatives and try to increase your conversion rate and all that good, 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 good stuff. Yeah. And, um, you can try to do that, but it may not end up working. So really it's just up to you. Like if you think the product has a ton of potential, then go ahead and make some new creatives, maybe get someone else to make the creatives, like kind of have a different take on it. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can do, but essentially the biggest thing with TikTok ads that I've noticed has just been getting really good creatives. So with that being said, 
whenever your sales starts to slow down, if you do end up getting some sales on the product, maybe it's like a couple of weeks, maybe it's a couple of months, whatever. For me, it was like, um, I would say like around the two month mark, it just like kind of tanked from there. And I really had to start aggressively testing creatives. Uh, so that's probably what it is for you too. Uh, just creative fatigue. So honestly, just test a stupid amount of ads. Just keep pumping them out. Um, try to be very unique with it, like test some testimonial ads, test some like ads in a different environment, different models, some voiceovers, stuff like that. There's a ton of things that you can do, a ton of people being really creative right now with TikTok ads. Uh, if you want to see some examples, check out my last video. I'm not really going to plug that right now because the important thing that I'm trying to tell you here is if you test a stupid amount of creatives with TikTok, like over 50 or something like that, assuming the product was previously working, and it's still not working for you then that probably tells you that the product is saturated. But other than that, I don't really know any other ways to kind of tell if a product is saturated with TikTok ads or not. And honestly, TikTok ads are so new that it's so, so hard to find a saturated product as it is. All right, cool. So now we're going to be talking about how you can use product saturation to your advantage. So like I kind of mentioned earlier, I love recycling Facebook saturated products on TikTok because like I mentioned, TikTok is so new, you have virtually no competition. Like I'm talking, there's people, they're the only one selling a certain product on TikTok and that does not happen with Facebook. So basically what I would recommend that you do in order to recycle these products is just go on AdSpy, the plug, filter by United States, filter by the shop now button, Filter by Shopify, it's cool. You can filter by Shopify and then filter by video and go ahead and sort it by likes again. So basically this is just gonna be some extremely targeted e-commerce only, normally drop shipping only products that people have just scaled to the moon. I've scrolled through like hundreds and hundreds of these products and I recommend that you do that too. Maybe not hundreds, but you should be able to find a product really quickly that catches your eye that's a good way to tell if it's a winner. And it also has a younger demographic because that's really what's able to be scaled on TikTok, at least from my current experience. So I would stick to like 16 through 24 if you think that's something that people 16 through 24 are going to be interested in. And it also catches your eye and you can probably go ahead and sell it. Um, you should be able to tell that really easily because like 90% of my demographics is people that are 16 through 24. So obviously, if you're attracted to that product, if you think your friends will be, then it's probably a good idea. And um, side note, that's one of the easiest ways to tell if a product is a winner. Basically, what I would recommend that you do is go ahead and order the product from Amazon and then shoot your own content. Because like I said earlier, if you just recycle content from Facebook ads, it's probably not going to end up doing that well for you. And creatives are so big with TikTok. Again, sound like a broken record, but super important. So go ahead. Order the product, record some fire content, and then launch the product on TikTok. If you want to know how to launch a product on TikTok, I have like tons of videos on it. But basically, long story short, just get three different creatives and split test those. And then go from there as far as testing interests, ages, narrowing down, expanding, stuff like that. Cool. So now we're going to be talking about how you can use saturation to your advantage on Facebook, which is equally as powerful, if not more so. Basically, what you're going to want to do is something pretty similar to what we just did. So go on AdSpy, filter by United States, shop now, Shopify video, sort by likes, uh, same old, same old, and then just scroll through the ads until you find an eye-catching product with a bag created. Because if someone was able to scale a product that high, that you can find it when you sort by likes on all the ads that have ever been run on Facebook, then that kind of tells you the product has a ton of potential. And if you were to go in there with a great creative, you would absolutely blow everyone out of the water and probably be able to scale it really, really, really well. So once you do find an ad that has a really bad creative, but it got scaled really, really high, definitely check out the product and see if the other competitors have equally as bad or also just like, okay, moderate creatives. Because if you can go in there with a great creative, then you'll just, you'll, you'll F S up. Yeah you will. Then basically what you're going to want to do is just repeat that same process that I just talked about with TikTok. Go ahead and order the product, record some fire content, and then launch the product on Facebook. Again, I have videos on this. Um, it's probably above my head. Maybe I'll put it in the description below, but I teach you how to launch product on Facebook, launch product on TikTok, 
and now I'm teaching you what products to launch. So really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Honestly, this has been my favorite product research method by far. Um, I almost don't do anything else right now. Like I have a, just a massive list of products that I need to test and uh, the vast majority have come from here. And yeah, it's just a great, great method. So if you guys wanna use this, again, I have an affiliate link below in the description. Um, plug me up, I'm plugging you up. Can't really get affiliate links for Adspy anymore. But um, yeah, really appreciate you guys watching this video and uh, I'm out. All right guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really appreciate your time. Hope you got a ton of value out of it. And if so, help me out, just hit that big red subscribe button or the, the like button or whatever these YouTubers tell their, their viewers to do because it helps stuff. I guess. Anyway, uh, so yeah, just definitely drop a comment below if there's any videos that you want to see me make. Again, really appreciate your time watching me talk and uh, see you guys in the next one.